Hello everyone. Today, instead of my home studio, I'm joining you from my hotel room in San Francisco. Uh, today was day zero of Microsoft Ignite, so I got checked in. I got my nice backpack here. Uh, look at this, it even has a nice uh, Microsoft print on the inside, that's the Microsoft Ignite backpack. But more importantly, what I did today is I went and I did the AB900 certification exam beta, which is the Microsoft 365 certified copilot and agent administration fundamentals. Now this exam is still in beta. It actually came out just a few days ago. And uh, because at Microsoft Ignite, whoever is attending, you can get one free certification exam. This is the one that I decided to do it on. Um, now I'll take a step back. For those of you that have no idea what the AB900 is, I did a video that covers all the five Microsoft credentials that Microsoft just released that are dedicated to M365 Copilot. So you'll have the link in the description below. Go watch that one and then come back here because in this video, what I want to do is uh, give you my honest feedback as I come out from the exam uh, on what I think about it. Now, originally I wanted to record this video at the conference center. However, uh, this year they are a bit more strict on cameras and things like that. So I just wanted to do it here to be a bit safe, but it's still all fresh in my mind. So what can you expect? And I'm not gonna break NDA, uh, of course, in this video, but I'll tell you a bit what to expect. I'll tell you some of the study materials I recommend, and as well as some of my honest feelings about the exam. So, uh, like every fundamental exam at Microsoft, you'll have uh, 60 minutes to do the exam, and you'll have somewhere between 40 and 60 questions. Uh, remember, this is fundamental. So, uh, you'll have about one minute per question. It can go quite fast, uh, but they're the type of questions that Either you know them or you don't. You know, you don't have complicated labs or case studies. Uh, you don't need to think at architecture and things like that. It's a lot of true or false questions, or uh, you have four choices, multiple choice, select the one that works best, or uh, you have an image of something and you have a question on, you need to configure this. Where do you click inside of the menu? So those are the types of questions you have. Uh, it took me about 20 minutes to do it, including, not including the feedback, so about 20 minutes to actually uh, do uh, the exam. I cannot tell you how many questions I had personally because it depends per person and just me telling you the number of questions would break NDA, so I am not going to do that. Now, the exam is actually follows pretty much the study guide that they put, so I have to say uh, most of every question in the exam, almost, let me just check something. And I'm looking at the uh, study guide over here as well at the same time. Uh, I have to say that, yeah, almost everything that was in the exam was in the study guide. So I didn't have any weird surprises there. Um, in order to study, well, study, in order to kind of, you know, uh, cram a bit before uh, taking the certification, I use the Microsoft Learn provided content, as well as because I'm a Microsoft certified trainer, I took a look at the Microsoft official course. But uh, because the Microsoft official course now is all based on Microsoft Learn, uh, if you look at Microsoft Learn, you'll actually have more content than um, the, let's say, the uh, paywalled stuff that I have access to as an MCT. So you are not missing much. Um, Something that I do have to tell you, so as I studied for uh, on Microsoft Learn, the assessments that you have at the end of each module on Microsoft Learn, they are really easy. They're like way, way, way uh, too easy. So they do not necessarily reflect the difficulty of the exam. The exam is more difficult than the Microsoft Learn assessments. Now, so with all that out of the way, the exam, so what I think about this exam is that um, it covers a ton of 
content. So it, it's a fundamentals exam, so it doesn't go very deep. However, I feel like the amount of products, so the width of the surface of the exam that you need to know is very, very large. And um, I feel lucky personally, and if ever you are somebody that's been in the uh, Microsoft ecosystem for a, a decade now, and you had the chance to uh, do a purview project, a SAM project, a Copilot implementation, governance, you had the chance to play with Defender XDR and all of that, uh, then you should have no problem uh, with this exam. There are, of course, some of the agent administration part um, that is brand new, that is in this exam, that, of course, you need to study and practice. But overall, the exam is just very, very wide, but not very, very deep. In knowledge. So uh, a lot of the things, and I'll, I'll base this off the Microsoft Learn content that they cover in the training. I'm not going to talk about the exam, of course, but uh, when you look at the training, what they cover in Microsoft Learn is like, hey, you're an admin. Uh, if you go to the Exchange Online Admin Center, you can manage mailboxes, you can manage mail flow, uh, you can manage, you can create shared mailboxes and things like that. If you go to the SharePoint Online Admin Center, you can create sites, manage sites, things like that. So you do need to know all the different admin centers inside Microsoft 365, and we know there's a lot of them. Uh, and you, of course, need to know what kind of task you need to manage in them. Uh, something else to think at is that you need to know Entra ID, of course. So you need to have an idea of Entra ID. You need to know things such as uh, Zero Trust, uh, but the one that I think most people do not touch that much, especially, you know, this is a co-pilot, this is a collaboration exam. So I'm saying most people, I'm thinking in my head of the audience of collaboration experts, we don't often touch Microsoft Defender XDR products. That's the one that usually there's a dedicated security team in the company that handles that. But if you're a SharePoint admin, you'll interact with purview sensitivity labels, things like that. But Defender XDR that's always the security team that manages it. Now, you don't need to, of course, know how to configure anything in it, but uh, you know, Microsoft Defender XDR has five or six products inside, so you do need to uh, know what each one of them does because you might have questions like, hey, you want to achieve this business objective, which Microsoft Defender product is the best for you? Um, and similar to Microsoft Purview. Now we know uh, Microsoft Purview is a big suite. It has a lot of things inside. Uh, but when you look at it, you know, you have DLP, insider risk management, sensitivity labels, communication compliance, uh, DSPM for AI, data lifecycle management. You might get questions like, hey, you have this business challenge. What part of Purview, what product in Purview is the one that's going to help you solve it. Uh, so you do need to know what each one of them does. Uh, so we're again at that very wide level where you need to know every single product in Purview. You need to know what their business goals are. You need to know uh, what problems they solve and things like that. But you don't need to actually know, okay, Vlad, uh, what is the PowerShell commandlet to actually go and uh, and do this, or you don't need to know the exact steps to publish a sensitivity label. That is for more associate level exams, but you do need to know when do you use a sensitivity label versus uh, when do you use uh, when do you use DLP or data lifecycle management. You do need to know that. Uh, now on the copilot side, uh, of course, this is the brand new stuff, right? This is the stuff that uh, we did not have before. Um, you do need to know where to manage all the different parts of Copilot. So you need to know, okay, what can you do? Can you enable or disable agents? Uh, can you assign an agent to somebody? You need to understand the, uh, so here it says the, how to configure the user access to agents. You need to understand the approval process for agents and how to monitor agents. And uh, that is a big part that I needed to refresh on it. And it was in the Microsoft Learn content was, okay, what kind of reports can I have 
inside Copilot Analytics, inside M365 Admin Center, things like that. Again, those are all on the study guide, but those are things that I needed to refresh on because in the day-to-day, I know what reports are available and uh, I'm kind of gonna, you know, take my best guess on where to go for it. And if it's not there, I'll go in the other location. But in the exam, you might need to know exactly uh, where to go, uh, what admin center, what tool to get a specific copilot report. Uh, also, make sure you study. And of course, this is in the study guide. Uh, but Microsoft always, in every single certification they do, they they, they like some of the stuff that you need to remember. So um, what are the core zero trust principles? Uh, remember, there's three of them. And now I hope I'm going to remember them. But uh, verify explicitly, least privileged access, and assume breach. So you need to know them. You need to know what each one of them does. Um, another one that is very well explained in the Microsoft Learn content is um, the responsible AI principles at Microsoft. So what are the five or six uh, responsible AI principles and what do they mean? So honestly, I do feel like when you look at the study guide, they really tested me on everything. So I don't think there is some of it that I would say, hey, you don't need to study this or you need to study more of this. I really feel like they did a good job splitting it across everything that I needed to study. So I am really, really happy with that. Um, so that was cool. Uh, what else do I want to tell you? I want to tell you what to study. So this is a bit of the tougher part with a fundamental exam because uh, there is a big gap into understanding those in real life and actually just passing the exam if that's what you want. Because if you just want to pass the exam and not, not really on... I don't want to say not understand anything because that sounds wrong. And uh, as you can see, I'm doing, doing this unscripted, just for, for stocks on top of my head. But uh, if your goal is just to, you know, uh, review stuff before the exam, uh, Microsoft Learn does a decent job. Some of the assessments in there are uh, wrong. Uh, some of the content in Microsoft Learn is wrong. So uh, you do need to be very careful uh, that some of the content in there is wrong, and that can be expected. That can be expected with beta exams. However, if you want to actually study and deep dive and understand all of it, I would study for the MS nine hundred, uh, the admin side of the MS nine hundred. I would also study the SC nine hundred. I would say even the SC nine hundred might be even more important to study for the AB900 because the SC900 has that cover of purview, has that cover of Defender XDR. So make sure to go check the clips. Whatever your study provider is, uh, I have the content on plural site about the SC900 and I'll put a link to that in the description below. But uh, I think studying for the SC900, that has the biggest overlap with this exam versus the MS900. Other than that, of course, go ahead. I actually encourage you to go play a bit with the research, uh, researcher and analyst agents. Even if you want, go to the free applied skills. There's an applied skill about the researcher uh, agent. Go play with it. Make sure you know what it does, especially if you don't have a copilot license in your tenant. That will allow you to really understand what it does and give you a better idea. But yeah, that's what I would focus on. Uh, now, I know I've been talking for 15 minutes. I really thought that uh, this video uh, would be a bit shorter, but uh, that's what I had on my mind. So if we summarize, uh, exam, large number of things you, know, you need to know, but not very deep. That is usually how fundamental exams are anyway. So I'm not telling you anything new, but I feel like this fundamental exam is even wider than your usual fundamental. So... Uh, I know Microsoft says it's one day of training. I don't think you can properly understand all of this in one day of training. Uh, other than that, 60 minutes, between 40 and 60 questions. Uh, there is still space if you want to do the beta. Uh, as of today, as I'm recording this Sunday at 5 p.m., there's still space to get 80% off. I'll put a link to where the discount code is in the description below. Um, and... Uh, just the Microsoft Learn content, 
uh, use the SC900 and uh, the MS900 on the admin side of things uh, to study and uh, go try all the different agent things. Go explore all the agent administration settings. Uh, go explore SharePoint Advanced Management, of course. Uh, so this way you know how, you know the difference and where are they here uh, inside the objective. Uh, let me search for oversharing. Uh, so you need to understand the features and capabilities of SharePoint Advanced Management. So I highly recommend you take a look at uh, restricted access control, restricted content discoverability, uh, data governance, the three different uh, the three different site lifecycle management reports we have, and all of that. Make sure you cover all of SAM, all of Purview, all of Defender. Uh, and everything, all the reports and management places where you go with agents. Now, if you have any questions, please do let me know in the comments below. I'll try my best to answer, of course, without breaking NDA, of course. Um, and uh, actually, I have registered to take uh, AB 730 tomorrow on Tuesday and then AB 731 on Wednesday. So I'll do all the better exams. Please, if you have any questions uh, or if you enjoyed this video and found it valuable just to listen to me uh, talk about it, let me know and I'll do one about the other ones as well.